Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on LeeChess.org and I just got paired up playing a 15-5 game. It's been a while since I did one of these videos. Let's try Sicilian. I actually looked back. It's been about six months. So this time control used to be considered classical on the site. And now it's rapid. In order to hit classical, I think the minimum is a 15. One of the time controls is 15 plus 15. But anyhow. A good opponent. What to do? Um, I think every game we've played has just been like a bullet. Thinking e6, knight c6, a6. I'll begin with knight c6. Bishop to b2. Okay, do I insert a6 or not? Designed to just prevent the bishop, prevent the bishop from going to b5. Uh, yeah, why not? Could do many things. Okay, well my knight likes that he has this possibility one day. And I'm not going to go to this square, it's difficult to fianchetto. Let's start with this little pawn formation. So I'm playing it still as if it's a, a Sicilian. White's well, probably still going to go for d4. Uh, but you know what, let's just get the knight out. If he's chased away, maybe this knight could even take up a post on b4 one, one day. I'm not really too afraid of this move. Okay, knight c3, obstructing the bishop. Hmm. I feel like this might be an opportunity to play knight d4. I kind of have to slow, <laughs> slow down a little bit. I've been playing so much bullet and blitz that, uh, yeah. First time playing uh, a control with 10 plus minutes. So I'm thinking about knight to d4. Knight takes, pawn takes. He has to run away and I get the center pawn. And uh, I ended up getting my d-pawn. But the exchange of the c-pawn for e-pawn would mean I would have a central majority. So I like that. Knight d4 is pretty, pretty tempting, actually. Hmm. Uh, actually, what I don't like about knight d4, knight d4, e5. Yeah, that concerns me some. Tell you what, I'm still going to go in Sicilian fashion. Bishop to e2 is pretty conservative. So I don't want to get in d4, and now here's the other thing. Knight d4 takes, takes. The knight doesn't have this move. He has to go to an awkward square, probably back home. So I'm going to say, why not? Let's jump in. Difference here with the queen on c7 is that on e5 I could take and then take on e5. Winning a pawn. Feels like I should have <laughs> some kind of a, an attack, actually. Exchanging the queen knight for the king knight. This white king position can become pretty sensitive. So I'm looking at these fishing pole ideas, knight g4, bishop to d6. Both would threaten something pretty ser pretty serious. This right here, most serious of all, would be a mate and two threat. Knight takes, queen takes h2. What would be the defense, actually? If knight to g4 and g3... Yeah, knight g4, g3 is necessary. Knight g4, g3. Is this too crazy? It's actually pretty tempting. Bishop to d6. Simple h3. If I try to provide a, a square for my bishop, I think e5 is a possibility then, because after takes, takes, I have to worry about my rook. I don't have time to take that pawn back. Hmm. Hmm. 
This is pretty interesting. I'm going to give it a go. Is this too crazy? <laughs> We're going to find out. Main 2 threat, G3, shut down. Now, white has just weakened the light squares. My knight is hanging. So I have to do something about this and then this now. So I'm tempted to simply take out the light square bishop and be satisfied that I have uh, obtained a, a knight for bishop exchange. The downside, of course, is that I've neglected development. Uh, something other than taking the the bishop here. Not sure. I'm going to take the bishop. And from here, I just want a complete development. If I don't get killed within the next couple moves, I think I'm doing all right. But I might be getting killed soon. <laughs> I might be getting killed soon. Uh, knight here. Let's see if white pulls the trigger on that. No. It was definitely a, a possibility, I believe. We'll look back with the engine. But yeah, okay. I'm not too concerned about this move. My knight could kind of uh, reposition pretty good. Now this is definitely pretty serious. I probably just need to get on with castles. D6, I still feel that this might be pretty strong. How do I complete development? With the bishop then being unleashed here. Yikes. I probably just have to get out of this line of fire, this unleashing of the bishop, and they have a, a lot of potential energy, let's just say. Queen, rook, bishop, and they could all be brought to life with this knight move. So it's just angling for d4. Okay, well, I think first things first, d6 is a good idea. Yeah, d6. Yeah, I'm thinking d6. Very fast. They have more more time than uh, what they began with. So this is an interesting moment. I actually think I like this move. If I play to f6, these guys are released. I kind of help white justify this. Well, not the queen move in as much as the rook move. I don't want to see this file crack open, so knight f6, e5 could have hit. And these doubled pawns aren't a liability, I don't believe. So what's the plan here? Yeah, actually, both rook moves. I'm not sure how these files get peeled open. Where would I like my light square bishop? I'm playing with an unopposed light square bishop. So if I could really have his presence felt, I think I'll be doing well. How do we do this? We could go like that. And I, I, I want to get him on the long diagonal. My opponent has weakened a couple squares here, so... Oh, which of these two? Do I go b6 and then bishop b7? Or do I go bishop d7 and then prepare to expand and play bishop to c6? I'm going to say I like this idea. Uh, here's the other thing. Are they, are they really going for f4? That, was, that, that seems to be way too weakening. could try to prevent that with bishop d6. Then they come back over here, and then if they really want to get it in, they'll get it in. Hey. If they're going to play uh, f4, well, I should be able to do something. In fact, something like c4 comes to mind. Down to eight minutes. But I just kind of want to make sure I have uh, an idea for the placement of my pieces. I want, I want them placed optimally. 
I still need a flight square. Once things slow down a little bit, once I've kind of maximized my pieces, I'll, I'll lean towards h6. A light square. And maybe this is an idea one day. So this idea, I guess, uh, there could be a capture and bishop here. There would be... Excuse me, if I do this... Takes. Now that is serious, because d4 I could take on Passan. So what's the idea here? This is an opportunity for me to crack the position open a little bit. What's wrong with c4? There's one diagonal open. This is another one. It's pretty scary for white, is it not? Ooh, all right, I'm going to give this one a go. Are they missing that they don't really have d4 in reply to bishop c5? Here, 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 I have enough on it. So in situations like these where you basically cannot prevent bishop c5, I'm more inclined to move the king before the queen. King has fewer options than the queen, most likely. So I'll go with the piece with the fewer options first. So there we go with the king move. So I could go here straight away. I could also, this is that much more appealing. This queen at the same time has a responsibility. I should really keep my eyes opened here. This is sharpening. Position is sharpening. Uh, what do you do? Can I always just take first. Well, I think I like bishop c5 first. Queen here, probably. Yeah, let's start with bishop c5. Because she has a responsibility. She has to watch over f4. She's in babysitter mode. Now this is that much more tempting. Uh, I think I want to take now. I think. Here's the thing. White's ready to undermine the d5 square. So looking for this move. I think I want to take once. I'm going to take once. I want to open it up a little bit. This king is... It's scary. Oh, actually, here's the other thing. I have an f5 move now. If I play f5... Captures. Hmm. And there's no. Is there really a great rush with f5? No, I don't think so. That's a pretty committal move. I have to be careful. I have some pressure at the heart on the heart of my structure. I'm under six minutes. Thinking about b5 and then shoving the knight. If I play here right away, then there's a capture in d4. It's pretty annoying. And also take first. You know, take there might even be d4. Hmm. Interesting position. F5. I don't I really don't want to drop that pawn. Well, I'm going to play b5. Maybe they give me the a-file. I'm also threatening to kick the knight from the center. Be very careful. Here, take, and then bishop c6. I mean, bishop c6. I mean, there should be something just really close by, like some haymaker is very close by. Uh, I was pointing out this... Uh, point, it's not so easy to get the, the rook to g1, unless white can establish a pawn on d4. I, I'm kind of seeing this position where if white cannot manage to put a pawn on d4 and kind of block out the bishop, there's some problems. You could try d4 right now, takes, takes, and 
insist on this move. But at the same time, I could give that knight a shove. Here takes, pawn takes, or rook takes, I could kick the knight. You know, I should be pretty careful. You might want to uh, establish a d4, e4 structure just to negate the bishop, because he will not be denied the main diagonal. So kind of just prep for his presence here. Okay, now he's vulnerable. I can actually give this knight a kick and go here, but I I think I just like taking. Here, he might even jump in some kind of... Yeah, let's just recapture. The bishop is more exposed. My a rook knows what he wants to do. And my f rook might actually come into play with the, the old rover. Oh, there's that, huh? So if I take, he's just going to jump in. Interesting. There's also f6 I have to be concerned about. Hmm. Where in the world is the my opponent's king going to get safe? I think I want to keep him sitting. And I'm considering king to h8 of all moves. Hmm. Here, here, and then uh, I'm ready to go king to g8. I don't want to give this knight this square. I'm under four minutes. Hmm. Bishop d4. What's wrong with bishop d4? It's a knight move here. Tactics, man. Take a knight d5. Queen d6. Take knight d5, queen d6. If here I do have a check. Oh, that's so dangerous, though. This point is coming under fire fast. They might even do an exchange sacrifice. Hmm. Tell you what. Let's get on this diagonal right now. I'm going to go with f6. Hope I'm not getting mated. <laughs> it's so sharp. Yeah, my idea with that move was to go here. I do have a check. And I think I want to not take that pawn. Let's go here. I'm kind of using that pawn as a shield at the moment. I I, I get it. I, I hit it with, you know, I would take with check, but there's that move. And now I want to really safeguard uh, my queen. That's why I'm doing this. I can pick him up once the smoke clears a little bit more. My queen is really well placed. I like how things have uh, panned out these last handful of moves. Not so much on the clock, but definitely position. At any moment I could take and then maybe take here. Maybe I'm lining up f5. In fact, let's just hit it. f5 it is. This knight really can't move. Probably have to go in for this now. I could do one of these things. Scoop the pawn up with my rook. Keep my king right where he's at. Or the, the, the rook that is not contributing. He is protected. So I could do this. Probably this is more to the point. How do they untangle, actually? I have the forward squares covered by the knight. D3, I would actually drop the knight. I think I'm just winning here. 
The clock is my only concern. Position, I believe, is excellent. How does the king do anything great? I, I think I... Well, hang on here. Chop. Chop. No, the queen could take. Tell you what, we're just going to go here. Because here's the thing. Even if a queen exchange, I'm preparing this as well. Even if, even if the, my opponent probably wants the queens to come off. But even if they do, I have something. With this idea, pressure on the B file, pressure here, my bishop being opposite the, the king. So, anticipating that, they say, let's exchange a rook. I guess we're going to exchange a rook. Hmm. Two minutes. Or just go to the B file. Rook takes rook, rook takes rook, rook takes pawn. Uh, there isn't this check. I keep thinking that there's a check there. I have this square covered. I was thinking there's a check. I have to go here and then here. So I have this square covered. The rook can't get too excited. This would be mate. It's just returning. So now isn't this close to a backbreaker? One minute thirty. Rook g3, queen here. I have this check covered. Rook g3. Rook g3, queen here. Take out the knight. And then take this pawn. I want to take here with check. Here. Rook g3 it is. I'm just putting it on. What am I missing? Minute ten. Pretty sharp game, must be said. I think the end is near. Hopefully for white. <laughs> Am I missing anything? Queen h5, bishop takes knight. Very forcing. Yeah, bishop takes bishop, queen takes pawn, sweeping into g2. These light squares are collapsing. I don't see any good checks. On the offer of a queen exchange. Didn't consider that move. I should have some. Uh, I should have some windmill action, though. No. Take here first. Bishop takes knight. Queen takes queen. Bishop takes. Take here with check. Um, I'm gonna make it really simple. I believe. It's going to take the knight. Could have also considered the pawn, but I wanted my rook to go here, and then some kind of a, a discovered check is nearby. Thirty-three seconds, five-second increment. It's a bit of an unexpected move, queen f4. Not fun when you're down on time to encounter the unexpected, or really any time. Have to exchange queens first. No good checks for white. Have to take the queen first, as otherwise here and then rook here. Another unexpected move. Bishop takes pawn, king here. He just resigned. Okay. GG. Um, I don't want to look at it just yet. 
with uh, the engine. Uh, what was I going to do? One of these two, I think they're both winning. Uh, I was lean. I I'm gonna go with my instinct and say that this is. Well, let's say bishop takes king here check. And then a follow up. Uh, well, something just changed there. Oh, okay, I see. Bishop takes pawn, king up, rook to g2, and then you have to go into discovery. Yeah, and then rook f2. And then I take the queen next. Yeah, I believe this is winning as well. Here, 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 here. And even with the queens off, I'm picking up some stuff. In fact, both of these pawns. So let's let's dive into the analysis just to uh it's he's even calling for a mate in nine here. Even with the queens off, they both are winning. Queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, king h two. I end up getting this little windmill action, taking a pawn with check, giving a check, going here, and just cleaning house. So yeah, the bishop ended up being a killer. I was saying early on, let's go to the beginning. I was saying early on that uh, when I had the bishop, this unopposed bishop, I really wanted to put him to use and uh, demonstrate that his presence is felt. Well, it, it, it worked out well, uh, having the, the light square bishop, the unopposed light square bishop. I got him to function very well and is able to exploit these weaknesses. Let's just have a peek at the uh, the graph. This is how it went. So after knight c3, move 6, it's a fan of team black. But then white has uh, some opportunity, probably around the point of knight, some knight d5. And it seemed a little bit fuzzy. This was the moment where uh, I was behind in development, but I had acquired uh, the bishop pair. Once I got some development in, it was cool. But uh, let's uh, let's go through it here. Let's see what was maybe missed. I don't know if there were that many. Hmm. Interesting game. Knight d4, it's not a fan of. It prefers d5. Yeah, why don't I go with d5? Establish a pawn duo in the center. Okay, I went for some some fancy stuff. G3. Again, the downside with this is I'm neglecting development. I've moved both of my knights twice. I am getting a, a valuable bishop, but yeah, this point right here is is something like this possible? Yeah, it's not completely crazy. Giving it some time. Minus 0.7. There's certainly pressure. The bishop, the queen, the rook. And look at these guys. What are they doing? Oh, it scared me. They were uh, fixated on just uh, centralizing, I guess, but really didn't look to punish me. So when I was pointing out uh, my bishop being unopposed, I'd like to put him to use. This is something that's long-lasting a static advantage. White at the moment has a dynamic advantage in the form of space, having a direct connection between the rooks. So if white is to show that, uh, you know, this lead in development is something, that has to be shown quickly. It's time. It's a time-sensitive thing, unlike the bishop. I'm going to always have this guy around. He's not going anywhere. So I felt comfortable right around this point, especially after this. I don't know if I was voicing it. I definitely felt it. I think I think I voiced it during the video. But this seemed to be a bit too slow. Gave me time to get my development in, and everything is pointing at this bishop from here. What's the graph saying? So this is where it's equal, and then eventually it just gets better for me. I don't think I missed too much from what the graph is showing. This is something to not be too afraid of. Doubled pawns in the center, especially, can be guarding some key squares, and this is the big key square. 
and I am not uh, allowing White to justify this rook move now because of the this nice grip over d4. So is it a fan of bishop d7? This is where I was pointing out b6, bishop b7, or bishop d7. It's a fan of bishop d7 with the b5 ID in mind, so multi-purpose, one might say. And c4 it likes. Makes sense. Bishop pair, more pawns exchange, more diagonals are open, and this is the this is the main one. So king g2, yeah, probably king h2. Yeah, because I am going to get here. Tough call, though. <laughs> Here's the, the other suggestion, king to h1. Tough to really say. Yeah, king g2. Bishop c5. Ah, I could play f5 right now. What was I... Oh, I captured first. In... Okay, it's okay with capturing, but I think the reasoning I was going with was let's just take and then uh, and the, the pawns are moving far away from the king. I get hit with f5 right now. Uh, so on f5, suppose a capture. I just get on the diagonal straight away. I was thinking if this, then he jumps right in. But I do this, and if a block, then I take. Okay, so he can't move. So I could already play this f5 move without the bishop on c6. I only, I only saw this move until later. Yeah, only after this pawn came all the way down here, captured there. That got a little bit too scary. But apparently I, I managed it okay. It isn't uh, some spike or anything that's going back in White's favor. So, a chop... Now I went with b5, so this is the first moment I really should have been playing f5 and tying in with this idea to to put my light square bishop to work. Hmm. Takes, takes, and then f5. I don't know why I didn't, uh... Yeah, I should be going with f5 right now. Hit with f5, and there's this possibility as well, so there's two good reasons behind this. Just like the uh, two good reasons behind a bishop d7. To go here and b5, well, with f5, we're breaking at this, and we have a rook up and over idea. Okay, so f5 was better than b5. Now it wants to take. I just got on the main diagonal. I'm happy about that. Queen e5, or rook f to d8. It likes the queen e5 takes. And, yeah, I didn't want to, I just kind of wanted to hide behind the pawn. So, just pressure on the bishop, and I guess it's just way downhill from here. I could already go in for the doubling, but, I don't know, just want to safeguard my queen. And I guess it's just lost from here. With f5, and then rook takes b2. I could do rook takes b2. Now it likes rook a7. Rook a7, rook takes b2. I went with rook a7. Rook takes b1. Rook takes g7. So I guess I followed up all right. Rook g3. And it's it's gone from here. I have my options. I could exchange queens and go in for the, the sequence, taking out the knight. It's not qu well, okay, minus four. Minus four, minus seven, minus eight. Takes here. Suggests I cat. Oh, I give a check and then take the bishop. I see. Okay, multiple ways to win in this open position with the bishop pair. But it didn't get uh, this far after I took the knight. And they recaptured, they uh, resigned there. Before I could uh, capture one way or the other on e4. Anyhow, it's certainly been a while since I posted one of these. Uh, feel free. Uh, these uh, standard games are what they're now called rapid games. Uh, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this rapid game in the comment section below. And hopefully you took something away from it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.